Good afternoon. We welcome all visitors, guests, and parishioners to St. Dominic Parish on this Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. As we continue to wear masks for our own safety and those around us, we are reminded to social distance when in the communion line and especially when leaving church. During these times of COVID, communion will be distributed only in the hand. If you require something different than this, please see the priest after mass. This Mass is offered for the intention of our Sheboygan North parishioners. Our presider is Father Norby. Please stand and join in singing the King of Glory. <clears throat> Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Good evening. Amen. We come to celebrate the Eucharist. We come in the triumphant enter of our Lord Jesus Christ to the city of Jerusalem, to our own city, to be proclaimed who he is, who he was, and who he will be in our life as we just receive our palms blessed and this afternoon we come with them to give those palms and to give glory to Jesus Christ ready to celebrate his passion death and resurrection but before we're going to be celebrating this sacrament let us call to mind our sins and our doubts to our beloved father Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, who as an example of humility, for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit it to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we we'll listen to the Word of God. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, 
my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory 
to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord be with you. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated, anticipated anointing my body for a burial. Amen, I said to you, where the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the, feast day, on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into a city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Whatever he enters, said to the master of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room where I, where I may eat and the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, amen, I said to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It will be better for that man if he have never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. 
This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I said to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the wine of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, and I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I said to you, this very night before the rooster crowed twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go to pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo to test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over the, to sinners. Get up. Let's go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. Jesus away to the high priest 
and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heavens. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, and the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went into the outer court. Then the rooster crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave them no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? 
they shouted again, Crucify! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and, after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute, to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that he may see and eat. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lema sabatani. Which is translated, My God, my God, why you have forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Lord, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. 
These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who himself was awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched there he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's the beginning of the Holy Week, a day of fleeting triumphant when Jesus entered the great city of Jerusalem. Next Sunday is another triumphant day, even though we don't see it that way. It's of lasting triumph. triumph. In between, there's a strange mixture of joy and pain, sorrow, and fear, known to, to all of us human beings. We sometimes wish life was a bowl of cherries, but we know only too well that the reality is often for many, sometimes the exact opposite. We may talk as much as we like about joy, about happiness, contentment, and peace. But only a fool believes that Christians have the recipe for a trouble free, a golden future, and we do not have a common sense to tell us the human life, yours and mine, is complex, sometimes confusing, sometimes tragic. At this very moment, we are sitting close to someone who is carrying a great burden of suffering. There is a husband and a wife who has lost a beloved partner or is close to lose one of his beloved partners. And the couple may have been old or even young. There are merry couples who long for the children, but whose hope remain unfulfilled. Even at this time, we are dealing with the numbers of those who are suffering with the pandemia and those who are dying because of COVID. And even as the last uh, even as the number of abortions rise and annually, almost a mockery of their infertility. There are others, young as well old, who are crippled by disease or badly injured in accidents. There are those who suffer from frightening depression or from a stranger mental illness while the family is stand by helplessly. 
There are those who feel unloved and those who are unwanted and those who even feel they are unlovable. Each Sunday, great number of people come to this church to celebrate the Eucharist, to worship. We represent a cross-section of society. And that means, on the law of average alone, there are some among us who cannot face life without drink or other artificial props. There are some among us who are carrying around within themselves the burden of the past mistake. Each Sunday, there are among us persons caught up in the agony of mistaking urges, everything from gambling to stealing, probably self gratification. There are those creeped with guilt that they cannot release. To imagine that this gathering is a group of perfect Christians, probably we can say that it's foolish. Most of us have problems. Each one of us in one way or another has problems. Some of us, what others would call normal problems, are the daily life. But they cannot stop you and us and me to be a Christian. The church today, as we give the triumphal answer to Jesus in Jerusalem, the church is not a club of respectable and guiltless. And God is not the God of what we probably consider normal. He is a God of everyone and everybody. There is nothing that can change God's love for us. He accepts us as we are. We are the ones that sometimes have difficulties in accepting even ourselves. We just heard what happened with Peter. And Peter said to Jesus, you know, I will not be able to deny you. And he did it three times. We, like Peter, we not perfect. But we, as Peter, has given to each one of us the kingdom of heaven. There is a truth in the old adage. No cross, no crown. Suffering at this time is necessary if we are to become the persons that God meant us to be. Suffering in the middle of this triumphant enter, enter enable us to know ourselves and to get outside of ourselves. It matures us into the fullness of what is being a human being the type of suffering, the cross of our life. And we have to see it, not as a matter, but as things to react to it. Holy Week begins as it ends, in triumph, to remind us that suffering is a journey with a goal not a winding road that lead nowhere. The end of the journey is what we have been celebrating in all these days that we're getting ready for this moment. The end of the journey is the hope of the resurrection, the new kind of existence the way to that new life, we need to recognize that it has to be through the cross and the tomb. It is the road that Jesus traveled, and he accompanying us along the way today. 
He accompanying us every day of our life, giving us the opportunity to celebrate triumphal, triumphantly who we are. We are with problems, with good life, with bad life, those who follow Jesus Christ, those that today we come for the hope of our resurrection. And as our faith, then we come together and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, Chief of the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. With our faith, our hope, and hope in the resurrection that Jesus promised to us, we come to present to him our concerns and petitions. For the church around the world, as we enter into Holy Week, that all Christians may be drawn into deeper reflection of the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an end to capital punishment and for the freedom of all who are unjustly imprisoned. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those among us facing a crisis of faith, that they may find renewed hope in the scriptures, rites, and prayers of Holy Week. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Lydia Lee, baptized this weekend, for her parents and godparents, and for Christopher and all who are preparing to enter the church at Easter, for hearts <coughs> open to God's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That Jesus' reliance on God throughout his passion and death may be a model for us in our trials and suffering. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those near death, that they embrace the cross of Jesus and rise again to see God's face in glory. For those who died this week from our Sheboygan North parishes, Patricia Brinkman Gallner, wife of Paul, Alan Pintner, Michael Schmidt, Martha Jimenez Viga. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our community book of prayers for the intention of our Sheboygan North parishioners and for the prayers we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, remember us when you come into your kingdom and remember also to answer these prayers that we offer to you according to your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare the table of the banquet of the Lord Jesus Christ.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit, we don't we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effect of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though the innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as an enjoyable celebration we acclaim. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took the bread, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and again he gave you thanks and praise. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
granted that, that we, who are nourished with the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one in spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offerings to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. Dominic, St. Clement, Holy Name of Jesus, St. Elizabeth and Sidon, and with all the saints whose constant interception in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, to Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishop, to all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of these people that you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, especially for our Sheboygan North Catholic parishioners, and to all who were pleasing to you, and are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And as the children of God, let us pray together with the word our Savior gave us. Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but the faith in your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Announcements are as follows. Today is the start of Holy Week, the most holy days in our church year. Please worship with us on Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. Times for these Masses are on the front page of today's bulletin. Check out the beacon from this past week for additional worship opportunities at the Sheboygan Catholic Churches. This is the last week for registration for the Women's Retreat, hosted by our parishes this April. Learn more and register on the parish website or by taking a picture of the QR code found in the bulletin. Sign up now and invite your friends. Stations of the Cross will be prayed at St. Dominic Church at 5 p.m. on this Monday, just before the 5.30 Mass. Please also note a beautiful prayer and meditation of the stations has been recorded and posted on our website under the tab Lent 2021. Remember the two priest charities donation and flower envelopes should be placed in the collection box or dropped off in the parish office by Easter. As usual, the Good Friday collection will be for the upkeep of the Holy Land. Please be as generous as you can for these Lenten almsgiving projects. Copies of the Living Faith booklets for April through June are available on the table in the gathering space or the parish offices. Donations are appreciated. Additional reconciliation opportunities at our parishes are noted in this weekend bulletin. Thank you to all the volunteers of the sanitizing ministry. We are in need of sanitizers for today's Mass. Please stop by the janitor's room near the west atrium door for written instructions and supplies. As you leave church, please follow the six-foot social distancing guideline, as well as visiting with others after you leave the church building. Let us pray. Nourished with this sacred gift, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, and this your family, on whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father and Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Master said, Let us go to love one another and to serve the Lord. Coming to your 